Hey there, I'm Brittany Schroeder and business and marketing are my jam. I'm here to walk you step-by-step through this crazy thing we call business. I'm a small town girl, chocolate eating, Diet Coke drinking mom, marketing guru, automation Jedi, and all around good time. This is your weekly dose of all things business and life sprinkled with some fun. This is the Redefined Business Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Redefine Business Podcast. I thought I would mix it up a little bit on this podcast and tell you a story. I was recently working with a client and we'd been working together for about three months. They were feeling really discouraged and frustrated just about the progress of their business. And when I asked them what it is that they want to see, they said, I want my business to look like your business. And I kind of chuckled. And then I responded with, my business took me over 15 years to build and to get to this point. I think one of the biggest misconceptions we have about being an entrepreneur is that it's easy and that it's fast. And both are so far from the truth. I wanted to do a podcast that shares a little bit more about my journey as an entrepreneur, where I've been and how I got to where I am now. So let's like rewind and start back when I was a child. But I I recently posted this, this poll on social media and I was asking people if they think that work ethic is something that you learn as a youth or something you can develop as an adult. And I don't know what the answer is to this, but for me, I definitely learned this as a youth. I grew up in the country and I, I grew up learning how to work and how to work hard. I remember I used to farm for my grandparents. I remember um, moving sprinkler pipes and mowing the lawn. And we had this huge lawn and we didn't have one of those lawnmowers that had like a riding lawnmower. It was a push lawnmower. I remember, you know, feeding the horses and cleaning the chicken coop with my grandma and just doing all these things that really instilled like this work ethic for me. So this skill I think has you know, it's, you know, bled into my adulthood and how I have have worked my whole entire life. And this skills really helped me achieve success in my life and in my business. As long as I can remember, I have been an early riser and I, I just don't quit till the work is done. So my work ethic coupled with my ability to fail and push through has been really instrumental in all my accomplishments and success in my life and in businesses. So I would say that that is a really good foundational tool that I think that I have that not not everybody has. And I, I work hard, I do, and, and nothing has come easy for me. And I, I've really worked hard and long hours and I've really hustled to get to where I am at. And it hasn't been easy. I, I can attest to that. Okay, so the next thing is education. I am a huge advocate of education, and I think there is nothing more empowering than education. And the more knowledge, the more power. I really believe in that. I went to college when I was 18, not not really knowing what I, I wanted to do. It was just something, it wasn't, it was just like, that's just what you do. You go to college. So the irony of it all is I did want to study business, but you know, when you're 18 years old, you don't know what you're doing or what you want to do. And I look back now and I I wish I would have had a little bit more guidance and known more possibilities. I grew up in a small town where I really wasn't exposed to a lot of, of businesses. You know, we had, you know, there was teachers and of course there was doctors and nurses. There was a power plant and farmers. Like I, I just wasn't exposed to as many career options. And then when I went to college, I, you know, I, I still didn't get like a ton of guidance, you know, I think some colleges have really good, um, you know, counseling centers that kind of help you figure out what you want. And it, I mean, my college probably did. I probably just didn't utilize it. Who knows? But After changing my major several times, I ended up landing on, I'm going to do something in the medical field. So I was thinking physical therapy or maybe a physician assistant. So the undergrad degree that had all the prerequisites was exercise science. And I was like, perfect. I like, perfect. I like to exercise. I like to work out. This is perfect. And and I did really enjoy studying all of the things that came along with exercise science. 
but that's what I did. So the plan was to go on after I got my bachelor's degree and get my master's, but life happened and I didn't, I didn't continue. I graduated from Utah State University with a degree in exercise science. I never went on and I never really used my degree in that field. I don't ever believe that education is a waste. And regardless if I used my actual degree, I use my education every day. The things that I learned in college, the classes that I take, I took are, are just like it is it has become like the things that I'm interested in and the things that I say and do we're all kind of molded through through my education and college was a great experience and I learned so much about myself. I learned how to work even harder and to be self-motivated and self-driven. So it definitely was something that was really beneficial to me. So that's kind of my my education. So fast forward a few years after I graduate and um, at the time, uh, around this time, I had I had two kids. So let's see, that would have been... Fast, I graduated college in 2000. So this would have been maybe 2005. Yeah, 2005 about. And I have two kids. And this part really ages me, but this is when blogging was starting to be a big deal. And I spent my days looking at blogs of people that I didn't know. And I was so drawn to these blogs that had this beautiful photography and decided that I needed to learn to take amazing pictures of my kids and that's exactly what I did. So I got a SLR camera for Mother's Day one year. And the rest is kind of history. I spent hours watching tutorials, reading blogs, taking courses and attending workshops in efforts to learn photography so I could be a good photographer, so I could blog better. So it's just kind of crazy. Within a year, I would started my own photography business. Um, at the time, we, had, we were living in El Paso, Texas, and I, I wanted to do it so bad. I had some great mentors, but I built a, an incredible and very, very successful high school senior photography business. It, it took a lot of work and a, a lot of hustle. I did a lot of free photo shoots and um, put myself out there a ton just to build my brand and to get my name out there. But eventually I built a really solid brand and I was in high demand. And with high demand, you can keep raising your prices. And I, I was very successful. I would say I was one of the most sought after um, high school senior photographers in the area and definitely one of the more expensive photographers. So it was such a fun time for me and I, I loved it. And it was, it was my jam. I loved teenagers. I loved fashion. I would go and pick out their clothes and really like connected. And I was able to build teenagers up. It was it was seriously so fun. I had such a good gig when I when I lived in, in El Paso. Um, about a year into my photography business, one of my photographer friends suggested we should start a magazine. <laughs> it's funny because we did not know what we were doing. We knew nothing, but we just rolled with it. And we created the most stunning publication ever. Um, the magazine was called Mosey Magazine. I have a whole stack in my in my my home. And just these beautiful, like boutique style magazines. And it was, it was so fun. And we were just learning. We were just trying. I mean, I, I look back now and I'm like, we did not know what we were doing, but, but we were learning and it was so fun. And it was such an awesome networking tool. I met so many talented photographers and in turn, this built my network and opened up so many opportunities for me because I, I knew so many people and it was just, it was really, really fun. The problem with the magazine is it was more like a side hustle for both myself and my business partner. And we both had these thriving photographer, photography businesses that just took a lot of our time and we just could not devote the time we needed to grow that business. And so we really didn't make enough money to justify the time we put into it. It was kind of like, it was a jobby. It was a job that was a hobby. We were making little money. And eventually we decided to sell after about five years. But it was a really cool, fun learning experience. And it helped me develop so many skills, graphic design and networking and organization and um, just, just so many, like so many skills. It was, it was really fun. Okay. The next thing that I would say that helped me to, to grow my business and, and to learn the tools is networking. And one of the big things that I would say that has helped me grow is networking. Um, 
I realize I'm innately an extrovert and a networker. I, I love people and I love talking to people. And I'm, I'm so grateful that I have this skill. I'm so grateful for this. And I often refer to myself as a collector of people. And this has been an asset in my business growth. There is truth to the saying that it isn't what you know, but who you know. And I can honestly say the relationships I have built have opened many, many, many doors for me. Word of mouth is such a powerful tool and it can be instrumental in creating opportunity for sure. In, in the world we live in now, it's, it's so easy to sit behind our computer or our phone, but I promise if you have an opportunity to meet new people, do it. Don't look for opportunity for your business, but look for relationships. Seek opportunities to help others. And I promise this will come back to you tenfold. Um, so networking is another really great tool that has has just been such an asset in my journey. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is nonprofit work. So one of the most rewarding things that I have done in my life is to get involved in nonprofit work. I have a long resume of volunteering and it's been life changing and has taught me so much. When when my boys were little, I volunteered for Meals on Wheels. And I did this for almost six years. When I, when I started doing this, I had one kid and he was in a stroller and I was pregnant with another. And we did this weekly for years. And the reason I tell you this is because often I think we find excuses not to serve others. But I always say where there is a will, there is a way. So there's always, there's always opportunity to make a difference and to serve Later, I worked with the Children's Hospital of El Paso, Boys and Girls Club, Refugees of Texas, and PTSD Foundation of Texas as well. One of my favorite and most impactful was nonprofits was an organization called Haitian Roots. This or organization educates kids in Haiti, and I had the opportunity to travel to Haiti several times and help get kids sponsored so that they could go to school and get an education because um, it's not free in Haiti. You have to pay. It's kind of a luxury. Um, I will say there was so much personal growth over this time, and it played such a role in who I who I have become. It was life life altering. I mean, it was the most amazing, humbling experience of of my life. And I look back and just, I mean, I loved it. I, I mean, there was lots of tears shed. It was very, such an emotional roller coaster to go to such a poverty like country and, and to help. And there was just a lot of, just lots of growth and lots of just amazing experiences with, with that whole experience. It was, it was just amazing. I was on the board of directors with, with Haitian Roots and at that time, I really learned a lot about nonprofits. Um, in 2017, after my 14-year-old son passed away, I started my own nonprofit called the Gage Schroeder Compassion Foundation, and I still run it today. Um, nonprofit work is so meaningful, and I encourage everyone to find an organization that aligns with your beliefs and get involved. You won't regret it. It I, I just am truly such a believer and advocate of giving back and making an impact in, in the world. So that's my nonprofit experience. Around 2017, after I lost my son and started my nonprofit, I was introduced to life coaching. I was obviously going through a midlife crisis and I was looking for something to make me feel better. And during this time, I was also working a lot with kids because I had started my nonprofit and, and I wanted to help them. Several people would say to me, oh, you should be a life coach. You're helping all these kids. Like you're making such a different, such a difference in their lives. And at first I thought, okay, that's like super hokey, bust out the crystals, whatever. And I kind of just blew it off. But then I had a friend send me a life coaching podcast Instantly, I was hooked on the tools and the mindset shifts that I was learning about. And in 2018, I ended up getting certified, doing a year long program and getting certified as a life coach. And honestly, for my own personal growth, it was one of the best investments that I've made in my life. It was one of those things that, you know, you didn't know you were missing until you learned about it. And it completely reframed my entire belief system and the way I viewed every single relationship. It also helped 
me change the way I viewed my mindset when it came to business. And it's really been instrumental in my growth as a person and as a business owner. So that was another thing that I did. And at the time, I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. I didn't know if I wanted to be a life coach, but I just knew I, I loved the concepts and I, I wanted more. I wanted to learn how to help other people. I wanted to learn more about these tools. So I got certified. Um, and then this brings me up kind of to the, to the current time. This was a, a few years ago, but um, around that same time, I was getting certified as a life coach and I had started my own nonprofit. We had moved from El Paso, Texas to Houston and I didn't want to start another location-based business. You know, I had this really thriving photography business and I knew moving to a different location, I'd, I'd almost have to start from scratch, not scratch, but just like the networking and the growth part. And I, I don't know if I wanted to do that. I wanted to have the ability to work wherever I wanted. So I decided this would be a really great time to pivot. I'd always been good at business. In fact, when I was a photographer, I often said that the business part really came naturally to me. It was the creative part that I had to work harder at. Um, and when I was in the photography industry, I was often asked to speak on the business aspects of photography. That was definitely my strength. So when I decided to pivot, it only made sense to help others with their business and marketing because I was good at it and I, and I knew how to do it and I had lots of experience. I love to learn and teach and help others build their business. It has been so rewarding to be a business and marketing coach. And not to say I haven't failed because, oh boy, have I failed. But that's just part of being a business owner, right? You just fail. But just like all businesses, they evolve. And when I first started my business coaching, I focused a lot on teaching about marketing and creating a strong brand. And I still do this, but I've, I've changed a little bit and I've evolved into something a little bit different. But now I focus more on the foundational tools, such as systems and automations and building strategies. And we work on creating sales funnels and nailing down messaging and you know, I have several different courses that I have created over the years. I have a Grow Your Gram, a Grow Your Group, Rock the Rills, and Email Funnel Builders. And I also have a business membership called The Meeting Place. And I have done workshops and retreats and summits, and I've done a lot of different things. And it's been so rewarding. And I, I do love business and marketing. And in a way, I'm very analytical in a way. It is kind of like a science. It's kind of like a formula and you do this and, you know, and then add this and do this. And, and I've just really, really loved helping people grow their businesses and, and helping them get their brand out there and market and grow and scale. And it's just been really rewarding. And, and I have, I failed a lot. I failed a lot and a lot and a lot, but I have had success too. I've been an entrepreneur for over 15 years and along the way I've learned and gained so many skills and tools that have helped me grow. There's so many things I still want to do. So stay tuned, stay tuned. I don't know what's next, but I, I love, I love helping people with business and marketing and I love to do it. And I'm so grateful for all of the support and encouragement I've gained along the way and the people I've met. And I hope I'm able to give as much as I have received. And, you know, I'm just grateful for my journey and the things that I've learned. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this podcast. I love to learn about other people and, and their journey and how they've gotten to where they are. And so I hope that you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about me and I hope you've learned something new. So thank you. And I will see you all next time. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share with your friends. If you really liked it, if you really, really liked it, I would love a review. Wink, wink. Thanks guys. And I will see you next time. Let's not stop the party here. Head on over to my Instagram or Facebook group, redefine your business and let me know your thoughts about today's show. I will see you again, same time, same place next week.